I'm out walking the neighborhood praying for the DC metro area, which is clearly the front line of the spiritual war we're in, and specifically praying for my next door neighbor, Claudia. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Father, I pray that through this material, Claudia would immediately realize that you're showing her the full extent of your love. Make a way for me. Open that door that no one can shut. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. Father, I pray that Claudia would clearly see that I'm doing what Jesus modeled for us, being a servant, that the way to do it is by obedience, not just works. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Father, I pray that you would show Claudia what true humility is all about, not just doing good works. Open her mind to the scriptures that talk about works and faith, and that works that do not come from faith are sin, according to scripture that whatever is not of faith is sin. So it doesn't matter how good a work we do, if it didn't come from genuine faith in God, for which you have to be born again in the first place, it is sin to that person. You'll still use it for the good, because that's what you do. You'll use it to help people put shoes on their feet or whatever. But for that person, it's still sin. It's not a good work for them from your eyes because you had something else for them to do that they're not doing. Please give Claudia clear understanding. I can't, I dread the thought of another conversation echoing, you know, another rerun. Yet another rerun of what I've walked in for the last 24 years. I can't stand it anymore. I'd rather get hit by a truck than have to go through that again. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Father, I pray that that would not be Claudia's reaction. Jesus just told him, you don't understand, but you will later. And he totally ignored it. Adamant, no, you can't do this. Please, humble Claudia, even before you have me knock on her door. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. And that has not changed. Father, give Claudia understanding. All her church attendance and supposedly good works mean nothing if she's not in Christ. And she's not, clearly. Give her eyes to see, prepare her heart. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Father, let that be Claudia's attitude. Let her long, fervently desire to be united with Christ. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. I don't know what to pray, Lord. I feel really discouraged. I'm thinking of approaching Claudia and just receiving the same old hard-hearted, unbiblical, proud response. Help me. Help me now. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, 
and rightly so, for that is what I am. Father, I pray that she would be convicted. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Again, Father, make it clear to Claudia that if it was up to me, I wouldn't even be reaching out to her. I wouldn't be praying for her, nothing. Nobody would be. That's the point, there's none righteous, no, not one. And convict her through the prayer that, you know, surely she's not a woman of prayer. And probably 99.9% neither are her friends. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Father, I ask that you would align Claudia's thinking and views of Mary, coming from a Catholic background, give, give her a true understanding of Mary from your perspective, that she would not idolize Mary or anyone for whatever reason, whether it's for works or because of their title or their education or how much money they have or where they live or how pretty their home, nothing. That she would see everyone the way you see us. That there's none righteous, no, not one. All of our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And any good that we do or say comes from you, that she would give you all the glory and be convicted when she doesn't and for when she hasn't. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. Lord, open her mind so that she would come to know these things open her mind to the scriptures and give her willingness of heart so that she would do them, that she would understand the only way we are blessed, truly blessed by you, is when we obey the Lord. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am He. I tell you the truth, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. Christians, even born-again Christians, don't get that. I pray that Claudia would, that she would clearly see that you have sent me I'm not doing this out of my own will. I feel like I'm being dragged to do it. Let her clearly see that. And let her accept me, knowing that in doing so, she accepts you. And vice versa. By rejecting me, she rejects you. So I pray that you would convict Roxanne, convict everyone who's gone before her. All those people you've had me reach out to have been so proud and unloving, unkind, cold as ice, downright mean. Pray for Andre Marshall, that you would do a work in his life to humble him, that he would become born again if he's not. And if he is, repent and get right with you so that you could use him in these last days. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. Father, I pray that it would not be Claudia, that she would not be one of the many who betray Christ any more than she already has. It gets really old praying for the same thing and walking in the same miserable calling. Thank you, Father, that even if nobody has ears to hear, between now and the time I die, I can still keep doing these walks and working on myself, reaching my weight loss goals, and getting ministered to by you as I read these scriptures. Thank you. <laughs>
His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which one he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, that was John, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you're about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Father, give Claudia humility in the sense that, you know, everybody's so proud as if we've understood everything you've said. People who never read the Bible or barely cracked it open think they know exactly what you're saying. We're outrageous. Let Claudia admit she doesn't know your word well. Nobody does. That's obvious, otherwise the world wouldn't be the hellhole that it is. Since Jesus told us to pray for on earth as it is in heaven, and it's hardly that. That doesn't mean you're not real or unfaithful. It reveals Christians have been unfaithful. So again, convict Claudia of her part in it. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. That's a lot of glorification going on there. Father, I pray that you would glorify him again in the sight of the people and do it again, as always, by shaming us, shaming the people. Move your life to repent, to humble themselves in true biblical repentance. Starting with Claudia, my children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Teach Claudia what you mean by love compared to her definition, the worldly definition of love. It's so drastically different. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Help me when I reach out to her that it would be in a spirit of love rather than the frustration I feel and give her humility. Father, I pray for Claudia that she would have the mentality Eric had when you had me give the book to Ron. to get exactly how he put it or who even told me. Maybe, I guess Eric told me. Ron had told him that I gave him this book, and he's like, what? What a weirdo. And Eric looked at it, and he's like, man. And the way he did it with his body, he just kind of bowed down low, holding the book. He said, you should take this book and treat it like gold or something like that. <laughs> Except he himself didn't do that. We are just... Hopeless, which is what Jeremiah 17, 9 says. The last part that I never quote, the last fragment of that sentence, I forget in which translation, but in one of the translations is, who can know it? Like, who can make sense out of the human heart? Nobody. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. That's how blind we are. How clear is that? And yet, Christians go off to war to kill other people and then pray for God's help in doing it. Ridiculous. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, 
Where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. I read that scripture for some reason early this morning. Where he was going was to death. And I feel like Thomas, when Lazarus had died, and he said, let us go, that we may die with him. If only it was that easy, running a marathon. And that's what the Bible does talk about, running this race and run to win, win the prize. I pray that Claudia would be a good runner, that I could pass this baton to her. She's nice and fresh that she would take off running because <laughs> I feel like how I'm walking right now, real slow. Lord, watch this feeling away from me. I don't know why I feel so discouraged. Well, I do know why, but... <laughs> then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth. Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. Father, I pray that would not be true of me, that I would not disown you no matter what comes. And I pray that for Claudia, that she would first own you and then do unlike the body of Christ has done for these 2,000 years, the majority anyway, not stood firm in the faith. I pray that she would, having been given very clear examples of those who, born-again Christians, who have not stood at all and the damage they've done, are currently doing. And that's the end of John 13.